So in this video, I want to bring together what you've learned several times about the importance of calcium and its regulation. Um, so let's start with the importance. This should mostly be review, but of a whole lot of the last two semesters. Um, what does calcium do? Why do we need it? Um, well, first of all, it's an electrolyte. So it is contributing to osmolarity in the body, right? Just like any electrolyte is. So that is important um, for maintaining osmolarity. Um, it does have effects on um, action potentials, excitability, although not as, as directly or as much as potassium. It does have some, so there's a lot of roles, um, but I'm going to, the, the main ones are, uh, so muscle contraction. You remember that muscles, both um, smooth muscles, we didn't talk about as much, but they require calcium as does um, cardiac and skeletal muscles. So initiating that contraction, um, troponin binding to um, binding to troponin and initiating that, that contraction. Um, necessary for bone growth, of course, um, bone growth and then maintenance of bone tissue. Um, it's an intracellular messenger. So we've talked about it as a type of secondary messenger that can be activated by um, like peptide hormones in terms of intracellular signaling. Um, and there's a whole lot of pathways that calcium is involved in that um, and then another one is facilitating exocytosis. So we saw this with the nervous system releasing neurotransmitters into synaptic cleft. Um, it's also important for insulin release um, and other cases as well. So calcium mediated exocytosis or um, vesicular release is a specific type of um, release that's, that's very important. So that's kind of the main ones. Um, Obviously, low calcium in old age, um, especially in females who have low estradiol, um, estrogens, results in um, osteoporosis eventually, the breakdown of bone. And we've seen this before. So low calcium is the main um, trigger for what I'll be talking about. Um, high calcium is, is, we won't discuss that. Um, so low calcium um, stimulates the parathyroid gland. You guys know this. Um, parathyroid gland releases PTH. And there are three targets of PTH. So uh, the parathyroid is the, both the sensor and the integrator. Uh, PTH is an output signal. And then the bones, the intestines, and the kidneys are three different targets. Um, bones we talked about in the fall related to osteoclast activity, which releases calcium. Um, intestines, we talked about this semester, um, not in detail, I, um, but we have talked about absorption that happens in the intestines, largely the small intestine. Um, and so we can regulate how much calcium is absorbed um, and absorb more when leveled below. And then lastly, the kidneys, um, we saw this last week, um, the parathyroid hormone targets the distal collecting duct specifically to increase reabsorption of calcium. And so reabsorption means it's conserved, it's not lost in the urine. Um, so should all be kind of review. Uh, we're gonna talk about these two. I've got one more figure that shows kind of the molecular happenings with those, um, the intestine and kidney. Um, so the one, on the left, uh, we'll, we'll just say, the one on the left is the intestine. Um, so check out the labels here, intestinal lumen. So where um, the food is initially, at this point, chyme is going to be. Um, epithelial cell and then ECF will go to the blood. So basically we're trying to get the stuff to go, we're absorbing, we're going that way. So that's absorption. Um, reabsorption in the kidney is going to be the same direction here. So here's the, the filtrate in the tubular lumen, your epithelial cells of the distal convoluted tubule and ECF, which eventually will, um, there would be a paratubular capillary over here. So we're going that way for reabsorption. So the idea here is very similar mechanisms. Um, PTH, is the, is the output signal. Um, it's not shown on the left, but it actually is one of the stimuli for vitamin D synthesis. Um, vitamin D, we haven't talked about a whole lot. You've probably heard of it. Um, our body makes it really important, um, especially for absorption of calcium. Um, but 
mostly I want to focus on PTH here as the signal um, for the kidney in terms of putting in additional channels and membrane proteins that allow for the reabsorption of calcium. Similarly, um, PTH is one of the signals for vitamin D that then the same exact, exact same effect that we have these um, additional membrane proteins being put in the, <clears throat> the membrane. Um, so in both of these cases, a similar process is happening. We've got calcium channels on the apical surface. So that would be here, apical surface, label that apical surface. Um, and calcium can flow passively down in through those channels down a concentration gradient. Um, it's then going to move down the basal membrane in both of these cases through um, oh, two different mechanisms. One is this antiport. So sodium enters and calcium leaves. Why does sodium enter? There's a gradient for sodium to enter. So this is secondary active transport. Um, this channel here is um, the sodium calcium exchanger. Sodium is N, calcium C, X for exchanger. It's an antiport exchanger. Um, so that's secondary active transport. There's also ATP pumps that pump calcium out on this basal surface as well. Um, so that's how calcium is getting absorbed or reabsorbed. Um, very similar to what we've seen in the cases of glucose, but we've got kind of opposite locations of the passive versus active transport. But still the idea of we need to have active transport at one membrane um, and we can have passive at the other membrane because we can only use a concentration gradient once in the scenario. Um, and then again, calcium reabsorption in this case is stimulated by PTH, is detecting low plasma calcium and triggering both of these situations. So absorption in the intestine, again, a little more complicated because vitamin D is involved there as well. Um, well, vitamin D is involved in the kidney as well, but um, a little bit differently. Um, and in either case, increasing absorption, increasing reabsorption, we've got increased calcium in the blood. So that is an integrative um, overview of calcium. And here is your last learning check.